when I speak of you, of course, I'm incorporating NWA because you were a movement. What, what stroke did you guys put on the painting that wasn't there? I think um, just the element of, of the street, you know what I'm saying? That's what we were going for. I think you were a big part of that because our first record was basically just a, um, almost a remix of what you did with Six in the Morning. You know what I mean? We did Boys in the Hood because of, because of the love for that record. Yo, what's up, Music Connection Magazine? This is Hen G. Welcome to Final Level. Hear more and more and more right here. The Music Connection, you know what All right, Hen G, thanks for rocking with us on Music Connection Magazine, industry veteran, uh, down with Ice-T since the beginning. Uh, tell us about the early movement, how you got started with your brother, DJ Evil E. Let's start from there. My name is Hen G. Garcia. My brother, my biological brother, DJ Evil E, we were formerly called the New York City Cutmasters in Brooklyn. A lot of people don't know that. We relocated in our teens to Los Angeles. Out. So I finally relocated out here. It was kind of sad because we thought like the projects in New York and Brooklyn, we put projects to us with Beverly Hills because we knew nothing else. Even though the crime, the murders and all that. So we just lived that, thought it was part of life. So we came to California, moved into the city of Cartagena, near Bell. Bell High School, it was actually across from Southgate where Melo and Sendog, they used to come down on the block and check us out when they was young. They told us that, you know, they, because we were old and we was running with ICE. We met ICE in um, Veterans Auditorium. We were rocking in um, Bell High, Bell, um, Southgate, you know, the Latino communities over there were kid for us early and we wanted to know if there were any blacks located in Los Angeles because we just, bam, slammed into a Latino community, which we rocked, made ourselves a name, wanted to reach out. So we heard on um, K-Day about um, Uncle Jam's Army, we heard a rapper named Ice-T, Gypsy Lover, and then was going to go over there and do their thing, Bobcat, DJ Pooh, what have you. So we pulled up, <clears throat> my man Shaquille, myself, and my brother DJ Evil Lee, we went up there and we met Ice. We heard him rock, waited till he got off the stage, you know, rushed him, talked to him real quick, exchanged numbers. And then I, you know, came to um, our crib in Cudahy, um with the group formerly called Body Count. They were before they were called Body Counter, actually. And um, we was just rhyming, and Ice was rhyming, and we asked each other. Ice asked us how you sound. We said you sound like a pimp hustler player, and we the ones that rock the house, the motivators and stuff, the Brooklyn style, New York style. So um, that's when you know we started rocking with Ice. So it was kind of crazy because we the early parties we did with Ice, we were getting paid fifty dollars for all three of us a party. But we did five parties that night, of course. And we just elevated out there in the streets and stuff, you know, and um, started doing the Casa Camino Real with ICE and stuff. Just brung him, in a sense, and introduced him to the Latino part of the world, which still love him today, you know, we don't lose our fans. I say we, because my fans from Honduras. And, you know, I'm American, you know, the Garifu not from, you know, Afro-Latino cats, that's me. So I'm multicultural, so I can deal with and adapt anywhere. Which <clears throat> I'm saying, I say I love Los Angeles. Came with Ice. We kind of was introduced to the to the streets on the black side um, with Ice, the Afro American side where the gangbangers was at. We met the SAs first. It was cool. We met the gangbangers. We loved it because we bang in New York, but we didn't put gang in front of it. So we was just banging like whatever. You know, it's all good. So we could relate to everybody. We kind of loved Los Angeles and met the worst guys in Los Angeles, as they say, became our really good friends till this day through music. So um, Ice was the one that introduced um, hip hop with my, alongside my brother and myself. Introduced um, actually gangster rap to the world, which the media called gangster rap. We called it rap. So, so they put gangster in front of it, and it was on and popping. So we named it gangster rap. Then actually the media. I say that Ice T and Dre was talking in a movie, the other rap that we did. And I was feeling really good when Ice asked Dre, like, "Yo, um, <clears throat> what influenced you and got you going?" And I said. Um, six in the morning. I mean, Dr. Dre said six in the morning in school ED, so I felt good because a lot of people say that Dr. Dre and W.A. started West Coast Hip Hop, but Dre said within the art of rap that it was Ice-T, my brother and Evil E. So my brother Evil E and myself, so I felt good about that. So we're the forefathers of this, and now we're doing other stuff. Um, final level music. You know, of course, Ice is doing Body Count and um, Law and Order, but as well with us on the hip hop side, we're doing um, final level music where we have um, M. Dot Taylor, he's from Detroit. He has a record re presently out with Mozzie, it's hot, called They Don't Like That. We have Fetty DeMarco from Watts, Watts, California. He has a, a record out right now with M. Dot Taylor, Ice with Vezo, and Bino. Um, we have um, 
Namek. Namek's coming out. He has a record with um, coming out with featuring uh, Baby Nate Dog. His name is Inhale, and um, produced by DJ Battlecat. And we have Six Easy. He has a record out with um, Stevie Stone. So we have a lot of features because we have a lot of relationships. So we feel that you know we kind of piggyback behind each other and because we have relationships with friends. Because it's hard to get out here when you're just like a solo artist and just coming from the bottom. So by association, you know, we put the gears up. We pull, you know, we make calls. And um, <clears throat> yeah, we got um, final level music, a bunch of artists. We're working on some documentaries as well. And um, um so what was that? DP. Oh, we got Daniel Peter also. He's uh, not on the hip hop side, but he can hip hop because he's a producer, um, an artist, a writer. On the pop side, he can get down. He's kind of like, to me, I compare him as Justin Bieber meets um, Chris Brown meets Neo. So he's, he's dope. Look out for Daniel Peter. He's hot. And um, yeah, we're going out there. We have a show this Saturday, um, the 26th of March at the Morongo Casino. We're opening up for Ice T and Raw Bass, you know, so. It's gonna be hot, and if we see this after we film and stuff like that, it was hot. One of the hottest shows in the world, the Morongo, y'all. Ice T. We opened up Final Level Music along with other special guests. So, um, any other questions, gentlemen? That's what's up. That's what's up. You covered a lot, and okay. uh, talk about the art of rap, and then there's also an art of rap Latino. The art of rap comes from something from nothing. The Art of Rap, which is a documentary that we've done. I was one of the producers with Ice-T. And um, it's about Ice basically interviewing 50 of the most influential rappers that happens to be his friends and my friends. We met him via the industry. And it, it was really hot. You can see it on on TV, Netflix, YouTube, what have you. It's The Art of Rap. So I, myself, I wanted to do The Art of Rap Latino because on my Latino side, I see I was consulted by a good friend of mine uh, he manages Madonna and you too. He was my manager, and he was back here with us where you are right now, picking records back in the days before he signed Alanis Morissette, um, um, U2, and he partnered up with Madonna, Guy Siri. He said, hey, you might want to touch the Latino side because, you know, you guys do all the, um, the hip-hop stuff, but, you know, that basically is um, credited to ICE, even though we were, you know, the, the, the team. So he said just, he was a DJ, you do the Latino side, man, do that. So I just... You know, a couple of um, years putting it together and stuff, had some partners here and there. Some things happened, some things didn't, and now we're starting and jumping off the Auto Rap Latino. It's the same, not exactly the same, because we're going to have car, cars and automobiles involved with ours, like the lifestyle of the Latinos as well as the music within hip hop uh, style, because there's different styles of Latino music, but we're going to do the hip hop lyrical. I just don't want to hear something that basically you're just doing a bunch of um, harmonies on a song. Wants to hear like lyrics, even though you don't understand it. But you know, and plus all the rap Latinos, not just your Spanish-speaking rappers. It's just that actually, if you're in a Latino culture, your heritage or what have you, you cannot know Spanish but be a Latino and still rock at the auto rap Latino. Have to have skills, of course, in whatever language and stuff, <clears throat> cadence. So just asking them how they start, you know. Um, how they do their art, how they do they write the lyrics first or after the fact, you know, when they're in the studio, do they like people in-house or are they, you know, like rather the studio empty because, you know, rappers work in different ways, so, and um, that's the art of rap and we're going to do the art of rap Latino in kind of the same flavor but with a little more culturally inclined on our stuff but still hip hop. Absolutely. Not saying percussions and shit like that, you know, it, it, whatever the artist wants but they're within their style of um, hip hop. Definitely. So you plan on doing the Art of Rap Latino Festival and Art of Rap Latino Documentary? It's going to be two-on-one because, you know, you take them backstage, mm -hmm. put a green screen up, go get right. some content from where they're coming from and where they're going, and you put it together, the verbal, you know, the sound room in the back of the thing, and just make it make sense. Because everything's viral anyway. We could do it right there, but we'd rather document it so we can throw it on one of these networks Absolutely. as well. Right. Is there like an ETA where we can expect to see, yo, if we're going to have a show or a whatever around this time? Well, we're doing all the rap. All the rap Latino, we're putting that together, let's say, like, probably before summertime. Okay. You know, they say Cinco de Mayo, but I don't promise any dates. That would make sense, but we don't want to do it too close to the art of rap. So, right. Because we support it. That's part of our package as well, you know. Absolutely. So our team. So Mickey, we, shout out to Mickey Benson and Ice-T putting together the festival. Absolutely. So, with the show coming up this Saturday, is there another, just not the Latino side, but the art of rap, 
Ice. Yes, yeah, there's going to be one in New York. There's going to yeah. be one in L.A. Um, Crush, you know where the other one's going to be at? Yeah, Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, there's quite a few it's dates. A tour. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, a uh, yearly tour. New cool. York. Yeah, there's going to be quite a few. Okay. Yeah, we'll be quite on a few of those if our schedules permit. And then the COVID it up. restrictions are being lifted in different states, so they're adding Absolutely. according to the, uh, you know, back vaccination right. restrictions, the masking mandates. And all For sure. Stuff. Okay. Cool, yeah, cool. depending on the pandemic situations, you know, we're hitting up spots as soon as they say you can take the mask off. You don't right. need the card. Yeah. So. And slowly that's starting to happen. Yeah, yeah in LA, you know, look, I mean, yeah. it's cool. Yeah, you know, it's cool. Join it. For sure. You know, so a lot of these cats are upset because no more EDD, you know, it's so sad for them. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's only for six yeah. months too, anyways. But <laughs> uh, that, that's what we do. We keep catalog because it doesn't matter if some money rains, you have to spend it. So you utilize that to keep doubling up. You know what I mean? So right. that's what we do. We have a lot of music, man. Gotcha. We're excited about. We're about to put them on these movies and TV shows as well. Right. So put them sure. together really right, tight. Definitely. It's a, It's actually. It's a. It's a lifestyle because. I was the little guy doing it over there with George and Hosa, Ice T's manager. So I was learning as well on how to really do the administrative part mm -hmm. to not get raped in right. the music business. So right. I've taught a lot of cats as well, you know. Like back in the days, like I could say the King T's, the, the, there's a lot of rappers in that era that when they came up the hill to Ice's studio, called it the Crack House. Um, I was the one there to basically tell them about administrating their stuff so they won't talk about in the future that they, as if they got robbed and not going to take care of your business. So I was the guy to tell the homies, like, yo, and they trust me with social security stuff because I had to help them admin. Right. So I was one of the trustees in the streets. Still I am now. You know, we're doing quite a few things Definitely. with a lot of underground cats and artists. You okay. know, that'll make sense once we put it together. Definitely. Once you see it, we're putting it together now, actually. Definitely. So is uh, Ice working on, you know, like a solo project, you said was a body uh, count, he was doing some things. Ice is always, he, got, he got, just got a Grammy last year, you know? Yeah. Getting down is getting hotter, you know? So right. they offered him a star in Hollywood. There's a lot of things behind doors that it's happening right now. Right. So in the law and order, it's a job, so he has right. to do that first. Yeah. So in between time and the meantime, he'll rock the stage with body count. And when he's at all the rap season comes, or whatever, he'll do all the rap. You know, Ice-T's a very interesting cat. He taught us all to keep the hustle up, stop complaining, right. keep working what you do the results will pay off in the end you know so and he's doing it we same team you know right. wake up early in the morning definitely. and get the phone calls cracking go to sleep late at night you know, definitely make it do everything productive throughout the day definitely now we, we know you guys fuck with dre anything you can share about dre like any anything he might be cooking up that we don't, we don't know about anything exclusive well we have a song that he's putting on his um um you know jay changes his mind here and there he does a lot of things and a lot of records come through his um system and stuff a lot of people he meets so last conversation we had that he liked the song that we have that m dot did called um 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 thank y'all and dre wanted to use it for his marvin gay docuseries he's putting together okay so that's one thing amongst other things that he's doing he's doing a lot of stuff man you know he's working with some of the biggest artists and some of them so big, I don't even know their goddamn name, you know, but they're really big. Some of them not just rap, so some with orchestras, mm -hmm. you know. As a matter of fact, our kid Frost, I just talked to him today and I heard his new record and he has a lot of, you know, all these shit with a real band behind him. It's like yeah. the mature kid Frost, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's really dope. He was talking about the low, low rider anniversary today happening in Long Beach. I, would, I hope we could have had made it, but... As I said, um, 21st of March is my birthday, and my family mm -hmm. took me out to Shutters on Santa Monica Pier for a brunch, and I had a great time, because I really don't even go out to have a good time much. It's all work. Mm -hmm. You know, you see me smiling out there, I'll be working, you know, so. That's what's up. Yeah, got to enjoy myself now, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Not just industry, because industry is some shit, man. You know, you can go suicidal around this one. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. So people are going crazy anyway. You see the internet. They right. just, just, you know, talking out the side of their neck. There's a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. Out of disrespect. Uh, we staying positive on our lane. You know, mind our business. Created our lane. Mm -hmm. We in there. So that's what's up. Yes, that's sir. And you covered a lot. I mean, I really don't know any other questions. Unless there's anything else you might want to add that you didn't cover. Final level music. Final level music dot com. What's up? My name is Henge, H E N G E E. Artist M. Dot Taylor, Fetty DeMarco, Namek 626, 6CZ, 
Daniel Peter. And we got a few documentaries that we're doing that we can't put out right now, but we put it's in the makings. And short films as well. So check us out, y'all. Check out Ice T at Final Level.